Hello guys, Absolute Duelist here coming at you with a new Yu-Gi-Oh match and in today's match we have Pure Cash Tira versus Adventure Cash Tira. Yes, uh, it looks like the player on the left also won the dice roll so he will most likely be going first and he does go first. This is going to be a unicorn which is going to go into his full Cash Tira combo as we know he's going to get buff and then he's going to go ahead and use a Theosis which will allow him to just continue on with his Cash Tira combo. But today obviously as you can see we have Adventure Cash Tira versus Pure Cash Tira. This is going to be an interesting match because game one was actually pretty pretty long and I want to see how this match actually goes because I can't actually remember it because it was actually a week or two back so obviously the cash tier player is doing his standard combo making his Shangri-La going into Rise Heart banishing the top three gonna steal a zone from me and he's gonna go ahead and banish Big Bang to also summon back the Fenrir that is under his Shangri-La so he takes one of my spell and trap card zones and we're gonna see where he essentially goes with this so he goes in and banishes the Theosis especially summons a Scareclaw from hand Goes ahead and overlays the Arise Heart and the Scareclaw, making Mind Hacker. Interesting choice. If he was going to do that, he might as well have made the Arise Heart just so he can have the free material Arise Heart a lot sooner and also just equipping more onto it. So it does seem like he made a bit of a mistake there, but still, he could be doing a lot more. And we're going to go ahead and banish a lot of cards of our Mind Hacker. And well, here's Mind Hacker because he gets to banish, well, four cards from the top of my deck and one from my extra deck. Didn't see what he took. He activates Buff. Special summons back the buff with the buff, the Scareclaw, and he's going to go ahead and make his Rise Heart, keeping the Fenrir. So it seems he wanted to keep the Arise Heart on board with one material over having the Fenrir. Well, with having the Fenrir, so it, is, it was an interesting choice, but he could have mitigated that by simply just, you know, using the Scareclaw into the Arise Heart and then gone through all this, but interesting choice. So in the standby phase, he does go ahead and summon Unicorn. Now let's see how we're going to actually play through this board. He's got two back row, one's definitely a big bang. What have we got to play through this? We've only two spell and trap card zones, and honestly, it's going to be interesting because if we put anything in the graveyard, so we activate the field spell, our pressure planet, to go ahead and attempt to search. Actually, it's not pressure planet. Is it pressure planet? I can't actually remember the name. So we add Fenrir. Fenrir is added to hand. We special summon Fenrir. All right. Decisions, decisions. Like, we've got to actually think, because if we start putting cards into the Banish Zone, he's going to get to go ahead and get materials on the Arise Heart, which is then going to allow him to just banish one of our cards for free. So we're currently trying to think around how to play around that play specifically. So we go ahead and use Rite of Aramisir here, play the Adventure token. That gets banished, and we also get the Faithful Adventure off of it. Make sure you normally don't let the Rite of Messiah leave the board until after it's resolved, because otherwise you won't be able to place the Faithful Adventure normally, but it's local, so it's alright. He goes ahead and uses the Arise Heart to go ahead and equip his Fiosis under the Arise Heart. And let's see, how do we basically play around this? Because we've got the Fenrir that's pretty big. We've got the Adventure Token that's also somewhat big. We go ahead and attack. Okay. But we used the Fenrir's effect to go ahead and banish the Shangri-La, and he used his Fenrir to go ahead and banish our Fenrir. Alright, and he's going to go ahead and use the Arise Heart to banish our Faithful Adventure. So now we've only got the Adventure Token and the Planet. Hmm, th this is actually interesting. Can we play through this? How do we play through this? So we go ahead and activate Buff. Buff will allow us to normal summon. We special summon Tier Limits, Keshtira. Banishing a Fenrir. Okay. So, what's the play here? Because, have we gone into the battle phase yet? I think we have. Because that's how we got rid of the Shangri-La. We went into the battle phase and banished the Shangri-La. And I'm assuming we did attack with the Adventure Token. As well, just so we can have the, the XCs on board so we can go ahead and try to make Zeus. Okay, what is the actual play here then? Because like we've got the Fenrir back now that we used to bring back with the buff. We're using Fenrir because we haven't used the search effect and we're adding Unicorn. Okay, we can go ahead and normal summon that Unicorn, which is good. He's going to go ahead and use Unicorn to steal something from- well, his own Unicorn to steal something from our extra deck. Banishes that face down. We have a lot of cards banished face down, so we're banishing more because of the Mind Hacker. So our deck is looking pretty thin at this point, which is not good. He goes ahead and steals a Baron that he obviously banished with one of his Unicorns. 
And now we're just thinking, like, what can we do? How do we play around this? Like, it's an interesting game state because we've got the Fenrir, we've got the tier elements. We can go into make, we can go ahead and make any XC's monster that's rank seven in our extra deck, so we can make Big Eye potentially steal his monster. We could, we could do a lot of different things. Like, there is a lot of options here. So, what is the correct play? Because, like, he's still got three, two set cards, which is a big issue. So, we go into Battlefit. Oh! Okay, so it seems that he hasn't used an effect. Oh, we haven't gone into Battlefit. What most likely happened was earlier that because the mandatory effect of a Rise Heart, the Fenrir banished Shangri-La face down. That's probably what happened. So, we go Battle Phase, do some attacks. He's going to activate Big Bang. Banishing his stuff face down. And my stuff face down. Okay. So, what do we do, though? How do we play through this? Because we killed our own token, so we don't get hit with a Big Bang, I'm assuming. Now we're going to go... Oh, we have a Theosis! Okay. So, this is essentially how we're going to play around the back row. So, we're going to summon our Keshkira Scareclaw. Which is going to allow us to get the Scareclaw and probably go into a rank 8 play. Okay. Interesting. So we overlay these two. Go ahead and make a Big Eye, I would assume. Big Eye then still... No, we make a Mind Hacker? Why a Mind Hacker? Like, if we made a Big Eye here, we could go ahead and steal the Arise Heart. And then just have a huge Material Zeus. That's, that's, that's interesting. Maybe he banished the big eye? And that's why we didn't do it? So we go ahead and Zeus here. Going ahead and sending all cards on the field except for, well, except for Zeus, obviously. So it looks like he's just thinking, like, oh no, he can't do anything. He's going to give me back my material. And he just sends all those cards to the graveyard. So we are stuck with Zeus. All right, but... I feel like it would have still been better if I just made the big eye. Because big eye and make like a 12 material Zeus, like how do we lose at that point, right? Unless unless he banished the big eye. That's the only thing I can think of. So he banishes the Theosis with the scare course. Add something back. I didn't see what he added back. We draw for turn. And it looks like we've drawn a Draco back rider with a random card in hand. So we choose not to go to battle phase. He sets one, passes. We draw again, we set one, we pass. He activates Prosperity. Okay. Vanishing, looks like six, face down. Theosis, Lava Golem, Theosis, Imperm, Ash Blossom. He's going to take the Theosis. Okay, that's going to be a good card, because that'll get him to another Cash Tira card. Uses Theosis. Going ahead and summons from the decks. Probably summon like a Fenrir to get rid of the Zeus. No, he summons a Unicorn. Okay, interesting. Maybe he's out of Fenris? And we use the Imperm on the Unicorn. And he used Imperm on our Imperm. Damn. So he's just going to get to go ahead and get the good cards now. He's going to get the Burf. But use Burf. Burf's going to be able to give him the additional normal summon. And he's going to be able to revive from the grave. So do we just lose here? Do we just lose? Like, I don't know. So wh where's the play? Like, wh what can we do here? So he summons back a Unicorn from his graveyard. He's just looking at his extra deck now, seeing if there's any extra plays he wants to make. Overlays those two. Summons our big eye, his own big eye, to steal my Zeus. Switches it to attack. And then deals half damage because he used Pot of Prosperity. Alright. So putting out the life points there, just so we can, you know, have life, make sure everything's correct. Should have probably had this on the table already. But is what it is. So we take 200 from that. Well, actually, no, it was supposed to be more than that from the looks of it. So we took a, bit, a decent chunk there. We took, what, half of the Zeus, half of the Scareclaw, and half of the Unicorn. And he makes his own Zeus. All right. Overlays those two now to make some Red Eyes Flare Metal Dragon. And then we draw for turn. So, looking... Like, this seems like an unwinnable situation right now. I don't know how we can win. So, we go ahead and summon our Unicorn. Okay. Uses its effect and pays 500 because the Red-Eyes Flare Metal Dragon. Gets a buff. 
All right, not bad, not bad. Seeing our graveyard, just debating what we can do. And then we're going to go ahead and look at his extra deck, steal something because the red eye is activated. Go ahead and use Right of Aramisir to go ahead and place the Avenger token on the board. And he's using the buff to go ahead and banish free cards from our graveyard. He doesn't touch the Fenrir engrave, even though he knows we have a buff. We go ahead and activate Draco back Rider. And he's currently just debating right now. What does he want to do? What is the correct play here? Like, he could Zeus the board, but then he's left of nothing. And he knows I have the buff. So he goes ahead and does use the Zeus. Oh, no. <laughs> he kept he kept my his Zeus for that. Okay, so he detached two. Wipes the board. We go ahead and use Buff, summon Fenrir. Use Fenrir to go ahead and add an Arise Heart to hand. Special summon Rise Heart. Banishing a card from the deck, we banish Fiosis. Fiosis is going to potentially add us back a Scareclaw. That's good. And at this point, it looks like we're just back in the game. So we special summon the Scareclaw, banishing the Unicorn, special summon that. Looking at extra deck, seeing if there's any extra deck plays we want to make, there's probably no point unless we're making a big eye, but at this point he, we, he would have stolen it, right? Like he's, he's clear, it's clearly not there anymore, otherwise we would have made the giant Zeus earlier. And we just go battle phase, Fenrir's going to banish his Zeus face down, we're going to deal 15, 41 with those two of attacks, leaving him on 15. Alright, and then May Phase 2, we make an extra deck play. Probably Rise Heart, right? Because we've got three level 7s. Yeah, we make Rise Heart because it also plays around Lava Golem. Yep. That is uh, really strong. So he banishes one, special summons a tier limit, Kestira. Goes ahead and uses a Rise Heart effect to go ahead and put one on. Just looking in our entire banish zone, seeing if there's anything. Like, look how big that is! He's banished so many cards from me. Like, th this game is going along, so we put a Theosis under it. Goes ahead and use... Oh, Triple Tactical Talents. That's really strong. So, we go ahead and use a Rise Heart Effect to banish itself face down. And then we're going to use Theosis to add back the Scareclaw. Okay. Okay, so he's got a Tillamon Kastira. If he has any other monsters... No, we just take <laughs> we take 23 and then he passes. We draw for turn. We buff, summon back the Fenrir. And then at this point, it's just battle phase, attack for game, right? Right? Sca oh, we're going to use Scareclaw to special summon itself. Go into the battle phase, banish that face down. And then that's game. Yeah, so that was game one. <laughs> that's That was a really good game. Let's go on to game two. Okay, guys, so game two. Game two, like, honestly, I don't know what to expect from this game because game one was really, really good. And if I remember correctly, this was quite close to time. So obviously the person on the left is going first. They're going to use their poor prosperity to get one of six cards, probably, because you don't really care about your extra too much in Catch Jira. So banishes six cards face down. And he's going to reveal... A Rise Heart Judgment, two Field Spell, Fenrir, and a Unicorn. He chooses to take the Field Spell. Okay. Uses the Field Spell. We're going to go ahead and Ash it. Interesting choice to Ash it there, but I guess it's better than doing it on a Unicorn, because obviously he can take some from an extra deck. He goes ahead and summons Fenrir. Fenrir is going to get the Unicorn. And he activates Buff, so he does still have full combo. He's going to use the Buff to normal summon the Unicorn. Which is most likely going to get a Theosis there. Okay, uses the Theosis. Special summoning probably Rise Heart or something if he doesn't already have it. Okay. Okay, summons Rise Heart. Yep. Yep, correct play. Overlays those two. Summons out Shangri La. That's good, that's good. Now he's going to use the Rise Heart probably to banish Big Bang from the deck and then banish the top three on my deck. While also taking a zone from me, which isn't, which isn't very nice, is it? So he uses the Big Bang to summon the Fenrir under the Shangri La. And he uses the field spell to pop the Shangri-La from the looks of it. And then is using the Big Bang to revive the Unicorn. Where he's going to go ahead and overlay and make a Mind Hacker. And then take our extra deck to steal something out of it. So he steals that specific card. Don't know what it is. And then banishes the top four from our deck. Takes another two zones. Sets a card and passes. And it looks like he hasn't detached from that Mind Hacker either. Which isn't good, guys. Make sure you detach from your Mind Hackers because you do need to detach for cost. 
And he's also going to use Shangri-La in the standby phase to summon Unicorn. So I'm staring down a random set. Lava Golem, his two cards, so we get our zones back. Okay, so now we're only staring down Mind Hacker and Unicorn. We're going to use Change of Heart there to go ahead and attempt to steal probably the Mind Hacker, I'll assume. And he uses Solemn Judgment, paying half his life points. Damn! We're near its time as well, so that's not good. We're going to use Water Enchanter to get right to our He's going to use his Unicorn, which is going to allow him to banish one more card face down. All right, all right. Interesting. Where's this going then? We we'll go ahead and add the right to Aramisir. Banish a ton of cards because of the Mind Hacker. So our deck is looking pretty thin. Hopefully he didn't hit the Faithful Adventure. Otherwise, this right of Aramisir is just not going to be great. So he didn't hit it, that's good. But do we have the stuff in the deck still to search? Because normally when I'm going second, then I believe I would have gone second, I do side out the Griffin Rider, because I play a legal knight in my main deck. So would I still have that in the deck? I don't know. So we use the Draco back Rider here. So we open that as well. Get the Lava Golem back. All right. Interesting choice. Interesting, interesting. We Lava Golem again. Okay. We set one and oh no, it looks like we don't, we were only playing with Adventure and we didn't, and he obviously banished the Illegal Knight. Oh, that's not good. So he's going to go ahead and use Birth to revive his Fenrir. Fenrir is going to go ahead and search. At this point, I, I guess I could have scooped, but he's on solo life points. Can he even deal the damage before time is called? So he's going to go ahead and get Tillamence Kashtira, banishing the Unicorn and special summoning both the Tillamence Kashtira and the Scareclaw. And he's going to go battle phase for some big damage. So we're going to take a bit of damage there. We're going to take a bit of damage there. That gets killed and goes to big damage. We take 26. 29, sorry. Because of uh, the field spells obviously boosting all the stuff. And we're left with 800 life points. What can we even draw to get out of this? So he's going to overlay those two, makes red eyes. Ooh, that's a red eyes. Oh, we're on 800 life points. We draw for turn. Okay, we activate buff. We take five and we, we just lose. And I'm pretty sure that was a draw there, guys. But anyway, that was a really good match nonetheless. Like, game one was really, really cool. Game two, sadly, lost because, well, it looks like we broke and we only drew the adventure package with nothing really else to play with. But yeah, guys, that is uh, this video. I hope you did enjoy. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Absolute Duelist signing out. Damn, that was a good game one.